Welcome to today's program, and we have a very special guest. Her name is Celeste N. Bowers, and she has written a book with the most unusual title, If There's a Mailbox in Heaven. (laughs) I'd never thought of uh, would there be mailboxes in heaven, but Celeste, thank you for being on the program. Thank you. Well, let's just back up a little bit. Tell us about your early life. Um, I was born and raised in Fort Lee, New Jersey. I'm an East Coast gal. (laughs) Um, Met my husband, um, got married out here in 1990. What were you doing in Southern Cal then? I was a long way from uh, from your previous home. Right. Um, You know what? We we actually met on a plane where the Delta connection. We met in (laughs) Palm Beach, Florida. (laughs) So it's a it's a nice long story, but um, God definitely put us in the same path, and we were supposed to meet and destined to meet. Um, we now live in Huntington Beach, California. Um, I have a son, Teddy, who is going to be a junior at Colorado State starting next week, studying physical therapy. He was inspired by his sister's journey and is still inspired by his sister's journey to help other people. And my daughter, Christina, as I mentioned, um, she was 10 when she was diagnosed, and she is in heaven at the age of 10. Now, tell us... Take us back to the day when she was diagnosed. How did you cope with it? How were you told about it? Um, It was the day before Thanksgiving. We had trying to figure out what was going on with Christina since that summer. Um, And that summer, she actually transferred and became a student at Maranatha Christian. She was brand new to the school. And um, we were told that um, she had a rare cancer. And like I said, it was the day before Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, you think you have it all. I was the crazy parent with the big planner. (laughs) I knew everything my kids were going to do. I, you know, I planned out high school, scholarships, college. But sometimes when you plan everything so far ahead in the future, you miss out on moments right in front of you. And my daughter certainly taught me about that. What was actually... The diagnosis, you say it was a rare form of yes, cancer. Yes, uh, it's, it? it's called PNET, which is uh, brain and spinal cancer. And um, how do you t- tell your 10-year-old they have cancer? Did you say she had been exhibiting some strange uh, behavior? Was this connected, uh, you think? Uh, it was uh, lots of headaches. She was a softball pitcher and an athlete, and it was affecting a lot of things. Um, very tired, lots of headaches, but they couldn't really pinpoint what it was. But when um, when we got the diagnosis and I had to tell Christina that she had cancer, um, we made a deal that day, and I said, Christina, you know, we got our answer but we will never ask, why me? We will say, use me. Use me, Lord, for your name and your glory. And by doing that, anger never entered into this journey. Was she given a a sentence, you know, she will be with us for another three months, five months? No, not at all. Um, They tried everything, um, including a transplant. And we truly thought Christina would uh, make it. We never lost hope. She never lost hope. What was the transplant? Uh, You know, it was her own stem cells that they harvested and then put back into her body. But it didn't seem to affect it? No, it it, it didn't help. Now, you know, you're a believer, and you've got a lovely daughter, and now this happens. I mean, weren't you angry? Um, You know what? I wasn't, (laughs) because... Oh, yes. Did it hurt? Of course. It's very painful. But again, the focus was on this journey and how God would use her. So, I mean, many people would be very bitter, I would think, with with something like that happening. Um, What were you doing for work then? Were you a stay-at-home mom or did you have a job? Um, I was actually just started as a substitute teacher at Maranatha Christian Academy. And I had always written things in the past, mainly poetry. I've had a few published poems, but I've never written a book. And um, I actually wrote a couple of poems after Christina passed away and went to heaven as well. Um, Did you keep a journal then? As you were going through this, did you every day write, you know, what had happened that day? 
you know what? I didn't keep a journal of that part, but I kept a journal of all her medis- medicines and everything. Um, you know, doctors have the tool. They have their medical books. And Christina was always on the rare side of everything they gave her. And I would tell Christina, you know, we follow the book <laughs> and uh, just to trust in him. And I just constantly kept talking to her. Um, we tried bringing the outside world into Chalk Hospital in Orange County, where Christina spent seven months, um, rarely got the chance to go home. And when she did come home, uh, God gave her amazing opportunities um, to share with people. I mean, th- there must have been times when you would lose your faith. It didn't seem to make any sense. I mean, was there a period where you felt, you know, I just can't go on with God? Uh, actually, I didn't. Um, I think I just, you, you're very exhausted, but there's always hope. And um, I always knew that God was bigger than anything. I had my Bible every night. I was so tired to read it, but I would just hold it um, because I spent, you know, almost every night with Christina in the hospital. In her early days um, growing up, can you describe what she was like? Yes. Um, She was a girly girl in some ways, but then a tomboy in other ways. She was the one that if we went to a park and there was a school bus of like 50 kids coming, I would be like, okay, honey, let's go home now. And she's like, no, mom, look how many more friends I can meet. <laughs> and, uh, and that's the way she greeted people. Um, at that point when she was little, we were living in Seal Beach, and I would push her in the stroller down Main Street, and she would meet and greet every merchant. She knew them all by name, looked them in the eye. And, uh, you know, she made their day. <laughs> of course, it blessed me. Were there, were there times when she was in so much pain that she really couldn't respond to you or anybody? Yes, there were there were times when, um, many times that she couldn't speak from the chemo and the mouth sores and things like that. A lot of times she would write on a whiteboard to communicate. Um, we were blessed. We had people visiting Christina every single day. In fact, her third grade teacher from way back when, um, Christina was in fifth at the time, um, she held Christina's hand for hours because she said, I know she knows I'm here. And I, I know she can't talk, but I'm not letting go. So can you describe the final maybe 24 hours? On May 28th, 2005, when we thought it was time, for her to go to heaven, I put a softball in her pitching hand because Christina was a pitcher <laughs> and I was her coach. And I looked at her and she was on a ventilator, so she couldn't speak, but I knew she could hear me. And I said, Christina, you've won. You've won. But she wasn't ready. She had one more inning, bases loaded, nobody out, <laughs> one more time to shut down the defense. People gathered and prayed across the country for her. Once again, Christina was used for God's glory. Now, how did they know about it? Were you putting out, um, you know, stories about her? You know what? Back then, social media was just taking off, and I did not have time for all that. It was really word of mouth and friends and phone calls and things like that. Um, Just Christina had this type of personality that was so full of life and so full of love that she was drawn to people and people were drawn to her. So, and yes, she was on every prayer chain and things like that as well. But um, then on May 29th, 2005, um, Christina won, not a trophy, not a medal but the championship game of life. And the game of life is one of the poems that's included in my book, If There's a Mailbox in Heaven. Can you, can you read it to us? Uh, sure. Celeste is just checking through this uh, book. with I mean, what an amazing title. Um, as, you, as you're finding it, why, why did you call it that? You know, I think we all want to say more to our loved ones after they've passed away. And I wanted my book to be different. And how I made that different was that it had to be my voice. So I write to Christina as I tell her story. And 
the neat thing is, is instead of chapters, I have packages. <laughs> and the last package is from 50 people that never even knew Christina. Most of them never even knew her, and they were inspired and encouraged by her testimony alone. And that's the amazing part. Um, and so you've got the poem now. I do. What's it called? It's called The Game of Life. How do you play in the game of life with all its difficult rules? No refs, no umps to call the shots, no training offered in schools. Do you try out for an all-star team? Do you sign your name? Or are you chosen by the Almighty One to play in such a crucial game? My dear Christina, he chose you for such an awesome position. No tryouts, no draft, no need for earthly competition. It's always the last inning, and you must play through the pain. You do it so eloquently, trusting in his name. For you see clearly it's not about a golden trophy. By allowing him to work through you, you find eternal victory. How do you play in the game of life with no final points or score? You showed us, Christina, by carrying your cross. Through him, we win forevermore. Well, wow, that's very powerful. And again, how can people get the book, by the way? Um, it is online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, if people want to download it, it's also available on Kindle. And if you're local um, to Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, it is in the Calvary Chapel bookstore as well. And the idea of, uh, and the title is, If There's a Mailbox in Heaven, you're actually writing the book as if you're sending these messages to her. Absolutely. And I m meant to say, too, I also have a website called mailboxinheaven.com <laughs> where people can see more C Christina pictures and get a little more info on myself as well and also contact me if they would like to. So if, if she could, if there was a mailbox in heaven, Celeste, and she could read these, how would she respond, do you think? Well, the funny thing is, is that, in some ways, she has been responding. And, of course, that's not through her. That's through God. And a couple examples is one, um, one close friend of ours, Jane, has dreams about Christina. And I don't know why, but it's been every two years since Christina went to heaven. And each one has had a message for me. And each one, Christina is the age that she would be today. You can't make this up. You can, there's details in each dream. I could, you know, again, if you pick up a copy of my book, you can see some instances in the book of this. But one amazing story that I would like to share, because people always ask me, how do you go on after losing a child? And I say, how can I watch my 10-year-old daughter carry her cross and not carry mine? It's my turn. It's my turn to play in the game of life. Well, the other thing is, is, you know, you asked me if I ever lost faith, lost hope. No, I didn't because, again, I knew God was bigger than all this and it was part of his plan. As painful as it was, I knew he was using Christina mightily. When I was subbing, and this was after Christina went to heaven, um, Calvary Chapel's office people came up to my classroom, pulled me out of the classroom, and they said, we have to share a story with you. We had a family that just visited us. They knew about Christina. They knew she was sick, and they were praying for her. But they were going through their own turmoil because their four-year-old daughter was very sick waiting for a heart transplant. So this little girl, four years old, has the transplant, and while she's under, she experiences heaven. And when she wakes up from the anesthesia, the first words she spoke were Christina Bowers. Christina's full name. This girl is four years old. She had never met Christina. She was sick when Christina was sick. And she told her parents that she saw Christina in heaven, and she had a very nice room. <laughs> she didn't have to sleep anymore. And her nails were painted pretty. And... Only the people closest to Christina knew what it meant for Christina to get her nails painted all the time. So it's details like that. And then this little girl went further to say, and I saw Grandpa's room, 
and it's closed because Grandpa doesn't believe. And sure enough, her grandfather was not a believer, and this message was for him as well. So this is just another story in my book to share how God gives me these beautiful gifts and shows me where my daughter is and that heaven is real, his promises are real. We haven't talked about your husband, Ted, uh, at the moment. How did he deal with the situation? Um, My husband runs his own company. He has a partner, and he was very busy, but Christina was truly daddy's girl. And we do corporate theme parties, so Christina's room was always decorated the best in the whole hospital. And Christina and my husband had this bond where even when she was um, on the ventilator, they had a communication like no other two people. Um, and it was it was beautiful to see. I mean, how, how could you communicate if she couldn't speak? You know, it's funny because you look at the saturation signs all the time. You watch the heart rate. You watch everything. And when people that Christina really loved came into the room and she heard the voice those saturation levels would go up. You know, it was pretty amazing. And how about her brother? I mean, um, Teddy, I believe it is? Yeah. Yes, how, yes. How did they get on? Um, they were they were inseparable. And Teddy was three years younger than Christina. And, um, of course, this was really hard for him. He was only seven at the time. But I tell people that it's really important to include siblings on this journey. And we included Teddy in everything. I mean, I can't tell you how many times he rode the gurney for surgeries with Christina, you know, steering, pretending that he was steering through the hallways. And I actually call him the unsung hero because he wasn't in the limelight like his big sister. Um, And I always tell Teddy, don't walk in Christina's shadow, walk in her light. And he does. When you get to heaven, what will be the first things you'll say to her? First of all, I'm going to ask people kindly if I can cut in line. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I think the first thing besides crying is going to be that, um, Christina, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And then can you imagine, I mean, I don't know how we can imagine this. But in your opinion, what will heaven be like? I think it will be, you know, you read about it in books and you hear people interpret things. It's going to be the perfect model of this life here on earth. Um, But everything's going to be shiny and bright and there's no clocks and there's no calendar (laughs) And I don't have to worry about saying goodbye to anybody ever again. And she'll have a new body. She won't she, be. Correct. She won't be lying in a bed with a ventilator. But um, here's something that always fascinates me, Celeste: is what age will she be when you see her? Will, will she be the same age as when she passed away? Uh, you know, I've never thought about that. I know one thing: Christina had this amazing smile. And I know if there's a billion people up in heaven, which I hope there are, um, I'll find her. I'll find her through that smile. So no matter what age she is, you know, that God determines when we get to heaven, I will know my daughter. Now, you come from a Catholic background. Tell us a little bit about that and and how it changed for you. Um, I was born and raised Catholic and, you know, beautiful prayers, but after a while, the repetition of prayers, you start to lose meaning behind the words. And that's what happened for me personally. It was just words in the end. Correct. Yeah. And um, in 2002 is when I dedicated myself to the Lord. And that's when I had met several Christians that just kept sharing about, you know what, Celeste, it's not that you don't believe in God. It's not that you don't know, you know who Christ is, but we have a more personal relationship with Jesus Christ a personal walk with him. And I just saw the joy 
that these people had, and I wanted that. Was this in Orange County? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, and again, this is 2002. Christina was diagnosed in 2004. So it wasn't too much after that. Um, and I just wanted to learn more and more about the Bible that I hadn't known. I wanted to really work on the personal relationship with Christ. I wanted my kids to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And how did it happen with uh, with your daughter? Um, you know, just by sharing with her, because she even made her first Holy Communion. I let her do that because <laughs> she studied so hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I just explained to her, you know, just how I'm explaining to you about the, uh, you know, about the personal relationship with Christ. And she could not get enough of coming here to Calvary and the worship songs and wanting to know more. Um, I think it's called In the Secret. Um, and I put just a paraphrase in my book, you know, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you more. And that was her favorite song. Um, because she wanted to know more. She had a thirst for it. And um, she was so excited to start at Maranatha Christian Academy. And she just ate it up. Um, and it was wonderful. Now, if somebody's listening to this, Celeste, who has just heard the terrible news that their child has a terminal illness, what would you like to say to them? And what will they learn from reading your book? They will learn that there is hope that you do go on and you can walk on even in the midst of all this turmoil, all this pain, if you just cling to him. And I am proof of that. Um, I always tell people, and I have met people that have lost children, and I tell them, I'm not going to pretend that I know exactly how you're feeling because we all walk this journey differently. And they say to me, well, you are going to give me hope because I see that you're standing and you're smiling and in a sense, yes, you're going on. And I tell them that, you know, to celebrate life with your kid and live in that moment. Don't worry about tomorrow. Enjoy today. And if they're in the hospital room, bring the outside world in. We bent every rule. We <laughs> bent every rule, especially number of visitors one time we had 40 Damn, Calvary right. Chapel high school soccer girls come in, and there was no way anyone was going to stop that. <laughs> was Pastor Chuck involved in any way? Uh, you know, Pastor Chuck wasn't personally involved, but Brian Nixon was, and uh, Brian Broderson was, and Joey Baran. So we, we were so blessed here at Calvary for people that came beside us. So again, the book is called If There's a Mailbox in Heaven by Celeste N. Bowers. Remember the Bowers Museum? You're not related to that, are I you? am not. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> so people can go there, get the book. Um, what are you hoping that they'll get from the book? You know, with it, when they've read it, they've put it down, they've tried to digest it. What, what is the final payoff when they've read it? That God is real that heaven is real, and that he can choose us in any season of our life, at any age. And no matter when that is, he has a plan for all of us, and we have that hope of heaven. So is there a website for the book as well? Uh, you know, the website is mailboxinheaven.com. Can they contact you through that? Yes, they can. My email is right there. So if you are going through a very rough time at the moment and you need someone to, to talk to or to write to, um, besides getting a copy of If There's a Mailbox in Heaven, finally they go to? Amazon, Barnes & Noble. They can download it off Kindle or they can um, just go direct to my mail to mailboxinheaven.com and choose whatever avenue they'd like. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank Celeste N. Pa Bowers. Um, what a wonderful story. I urge you to go out and get the book or go to your computer and order it. And I want to thank Celeste for being on the program. Thank you very much.